And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. Kassarian, and today we are working on building ourselves a new type of vehicle, actually. That's going to be an SUV. All right. So let's go with... We can either go Jeep-like or something more like this. Let's go Jeep-like. There we go. Okay, so we can modify that. We can modify the slant angle. Something like that. We want a nice, big ol' engine bay up there. Like that. All right. So this is going to be an SUV. Okay. And this is going to be known as the Warden. And this is going to be the Warden Off-Road. Okay. So we're going to go ladder. Corrosion resistant. And let's go front, longitudinal. McPherson front. Solid axle leaf. With corrosion resistant steel body with good body quality. All right. Now, headlight time. Want some nice, big front headlights here. And then we're going to go with, let's see. We need something that looks kind of like fogs. So we'll go... Like that. Except we'll move them over a bit. And we want indicators. Make them vertical. Except we will shrink them like that. And then we're also going to want to put some indicators right along the side there for good side visibility. And tail lights, tail lights time. Right like that. So they fit in quite nicely. Okay. Um, badging, lips, handles, bonnets, exhausts. Uh, we can put some exhausts in. Uh, so that just looks stupid. So we'll say it's it's an undermount exhaust, all right? A little bit of quality on that. And this is going to be the convertible version. I'll make it a four by four. Okay. Now, we're gonna experiment a little bit with this one. Let's actually go back here and let's make it a front transverse And when we come back to here, uh, we only have front wheel drive. Okay. So we're going to have to go with longitudinal then. There we go. All right. So we're going to make it a four by four. Looks good to me. Okay. Now, engines we can use. We can use pretty much anything in here. But what I'm going to do now is I'm, we're going to experiment. So we're going to use a V8, aluminum block, DOHC, four valve, aluminum upper. All right. Now we're going to experiment here. We're going to just set this up kind of stock standard. Let's see here how big we can make this engine. We can make it absolutely ginormous. 
Okay, so let's do a little bit of research now. And I'm, I'm in another window, I apologize. So let's see here what we use for the modern Jeep Wrangler. They use a V6. A four liter V6. Why does that not sound right to me? Okay, so let's look up the HMMV. There we go, Humvee. Uh, they use diesels. They use V8 diesels. They're six liter V8 diesels, so. This isn't quite a Humvee, but let's go with a 9.2 V8. It's about a five liter V8, all right? So let's call this the V85. Variant one, okay. So we're gonna experiment. So it's right now it's a 489er3 CC. And it's a square. So we're at 92 by 92 V8. Okay, and then let's take a look at our power and torque ratios when we go forward. All right, so we'll just click through, forge steel, that forged, two points there. We'll leave this all the same. We'll go an NA engine. Injection, single, performance, regular. Tubular exhausts, dual. Three-way cat. Straight through, double straights. I thought that would be happening. So let's go fuel mixture up, up. Why did that? Okay, there we go. Reaching its RPM limit. I figured that would happen. And you're not giving me any stats up here. Why is that, computer? Okay, um... Okay, so that's where that sits, at 376. So that's 376 at 2900 uh, and 256 horsepower at 5800 RPMs. Okay, let's go back to here. So what we're experimenting with is bore versus stroke and its effect. So if we go down here, so remember we're aiming for a four, eight, nine, or three. Okay, so that gives us, 489 or one gives us, we should be 376. So 376, that's about the same. Let's make it a bit more intense. All right, let's roll this all the way down to 88. And we want four point, we want a 489 or three. Four, eight, nine or five, that's close enough. That gets us 377. Okay, so it's looking like that's actually giving us more horsepower. And about the same torque. So let's take that down again. Let's go to 80, 80. Four 
four, eight. Interesting. So, all right, let's reverse this now. Because that's looking about the same. So let's go to bring this up. Let me do that. So we're looking for what, four, eight, nine, or three? Except we're getting some. So it looks like it's about equivalent. Yeah, it looks like, well, hold on, let's fix something here. Uh, how do I fix this? Well, cam profile. So it looks like it's pretty much the same. Um, it bore and stroke don't really have much of an effect on how much torque the engine generates. So let's go to the Google and let's confirm this. How, what? Determines engine torque. Transmission has a lot to do with it. Okay, yeah, so it's a, it's a, yeah, okay. Okie dokie, all right. So, this means that we're actually going to go with a V12. Because my entire game wigs out for about five minutes. Too big to fit in the car. Yeah, no, you're not kidding. We can't turbo this, can we? Holy Toledo, we could turbo this thing. Okay. <clears throat> We're going to call this the X, the X12. And this is going to be our NA variant. Okay. Nope, that's not what I wanted. I want to go back here. Okay. So that's about as big as we can make this thing, right? Let's pull this panel out now. So it's going to be, go back here. A 5.2 liter V12. Okie dokie then. And this is all looking good. Let's go back to here. Let's increase our RPM limit. To about there. 2,900 RPM is about our standard. Okay. So, now, let's start trying to get as much power as we can out of this sucker, shall we? Okay. Give her a little bit more fuel mixture, which will also allow us to give us a little bit more ignition timing, a little bit less ignition timing in that case. Okay, so we're looking at about 291 horsepower at 1,500 RPM. That, that isn't bad at all. Okay. And now we play the exhaust game, of course. So we're pushing about 315 horsepower out of this engine. All right, 315 horsepower. That is 
quite a bit of power we're looking at here. Okay. And 446 newton meters of torque. That also is a lot of power. Now, let's give us a bit more quality in there, a bit more quality in there. That gives us a bit more room to play with, which lets us, our ignition timing is there. That lets us play with our compression a little bit more, not quite that, apparently that much. There we go. All right, so we are pushing a frankly incredible amount of power into this thing. Okay, how does this thing sound? Like hell itself. All right, good. Let's move again. Okay, so manual, single clutch. Four or five, I'm not certain yet. Want to be in that for a while. Okay, off-road. Off-road on a manual locker. Did you reset yourself again? You did, didn't you? No, you're set to 4x4. Four four. So why back here are you saying power distribution? All right, so move that ahead. Off-road tires, steel off-road tires. Big, thick, chunky steel off-road tires. Okay. Little two LS and SLS. Big freaking tires with big brakes with an off-road skid tray all right we need 292.7 all right let's go back to here and over to here grills all right we're gonna use a we're not gonna use our v grill And we're actually going to mount the grill high up on the vehicle. Um, and the reason for that is to... Actually, we could even mount it. Right there. And the reason I'm thinking of mounting it high up like that is water. Right? So if you're fording something, you want that water to not quite go up into there. Right? Right. Okay. So we'll come back to here. So we need 292... Like that. Five seat. Standard. Standard. Power steering. Advanced 80s. Okay. Hydro pneumatic twin tube that with an off road suspension. Detail stats, please. Practicality is off the charts. Utility. Okay, what are we losing on utility? We're losing cargo space, but our load or car, cargo volume, but high load capacity. Our torque curve isn't the best, and they don't like our gear ratio. They like the rims, the gearbox. They don't like the tires incredibly well. They like the power to weight. They don't like the brake fade. All right, let's look at the brake fade and what we can fix there. The answer, by the way, on brake, what we can fix on brake fade is not a lot. Um, yeah, see, we can't go much higher than that. Here's the thing, I can go up to there, and I can go up to there, but going any higher, let's see if I do that, if I do that, yeah. We're going to have to go all the way up to doing three pistons on the front. Well, 
If we switch to Venteds, that looks better. Okay. And then... There we go. So it's actually using solid discs, oddly enough. They don't like the torque curve, but I'm not certain how I can fix the torque curve. They don't like tires. The brake fade is less of an issue than it was in engine idle. I, see, I don't know what engine idle means. Practicality is still stupid high. Off-road's pretty high, too. Suspension quality, under tray, gear ratios, and brake fit. So, I'm not certain how to fix with the gear ratios. Let's take a look at this. Hold on. Okay, so the problem with the wheel spin is that's just going to be something we're going to have to live with. Um, what is this? C Sport B? I have no idea what that means. I have literally no idea what that means. Okay. Wheel diameter minus 1.5. I. Okay. Well, you know what? They like it a lot. Let's look at what the markets say. I don't know how I'm convertible sport budget. That must have been CSB. Off-road premium. Uh, yeah, we're not even close to that. Muscle. What? Off-road. We're doing really well, but we're more expensive than the competition. That's an issue. Uh, convertible sport. Convertible. Where is utility? What's, okay, what aren't we doing well about heavy utility? Let's take another look. Where is utility? Utility. Practicality, reliability, economy. Okay, so let's do a new variant. New trim variant. It is also going to be a 4x4. Four four. We're going to use the same body type here. We're going to shrink that a little bit. We're going to shrink that a little bit. And we're going to name this the General. Now, engine time. I'm actually tempted. I'm tempted to use the V6A1. It's a three liter V6. Manual, single clutch, four speed. And. Uh, with a manual locker.
Nice, bigger tires there. Oh, wait, we need to select steel. Solids, double, solid, single. Off-road skid tray, please. Airflow, we need 183. So let's take another look at this, and we'll add 183 worth of cooling to this thing. Grills, please. And we'll use something pretty basic. Like that. And we'll do that. Okay. Next. Five seat, standard. No quality boost. Standard. Power steering. No quality boost. Advanced. Two quality boosts there. All right. with off-road. Okay, practicality. Utility's a little bit lower. Off-road's lower. Why is off-road lower? Gear spacing. So if we fix the brake fade... Okay. Yeah, I thought that would be the issue. Yoink. Brake fade has been mostly resolved. If we go to Vented's... I guess we go back to Solids. Okay. What else we take a penalty on? Drivability is not bad. Oh, we never fixed understeer oversteer on our initial model. Oops. Why can't I change my front wheel camber? Um, guys, why can't why can't I change my front wheel camber? Okay, so drivability's back up. We're not doing bad on sportiness or off-road. It has a bit of sportiness. And we're doing well on off-road. Okay. What else we need to fix with this thing? Detail stats. Um, they don't like the gearbox. They don't like the drivetrain. Brake balance, brake fade, tires. Well, yeah, of course, tires, but it's an off-road vehicle. What do you want? Uh, practicality, when we need to fix cargo volumes, an issue. Number of doors are an issue. Load capacity is good. Utility. Uh, cargo volumes, an issue still. Load capacity is an issue. Okay. Off road. They want bigger wheels. Are those wheels big enough for you guys? Uh, yeah, looking pretty good. Gear spacing could still be resolved a bit.
Looks pretty good to me. Nice, long, sort of sweeping gear ratios there. Now, gear spacing is less of an issue. Uh, overhang. I don't know what overhang means. I'll admit that right off the bat. They like the under tray. Gear ratios. Oh, okay. I see. I see. I see. I see. Okay. So if we go back to here. Okay, that, that looks okay. Alright, so, let's look at markets now. Hey, off-road, look at that. Better detail stats. Off-road, yay, we're wicked desirable and wicked expensive. Convertible, off-road premium, we are not as good by a long shot, but much less expensive. So we're kind of in a weird range here. Heavy utility, look at that, heavy utility. We are better, but more expensive. That's not bad there. Okay. So we now have off-road utility. Yay, we're much more expensive, but at least we do well there. Okay, so. The V6A1 engine does much better in this vehicle than we would have thought it would, which is fantastic. Now, the problem is that we're going to have to really wait um, going forward until we get to sort of a non... What's a good word for it? It's going to take us a little while to get to the place where we have a a good variant of this vehicle that is essentially... That's a good word for it. It's going to take us a while to get to a place where we actually have something like four-wheel drive. You know, like what we now think of as four-wheel drive. It's not a four-by-four, four, it's a variable, okay? But anyways, until that point, we'll just have to wait till we get there. This has been Mr. Kasarian. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the episode, and I will see you next time. Happy building.